Today I'm going to speak to you about responsibility of parent. And within that, I'm going to talk about two couples. One couple from the Old Testament and one couple from the New Testament. The couple from the Old Testament is a couple, uh, one of whom you know her name, Hannah, but the husband, most people don't know the husband's name. The husband of Hannah is called Elkanah, Elkanah, and you will find your story in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Hannah was barren. Uh, Elkanah had two wives. Uh, the other wife was fruitful, had many children, but Hannah was barren, and she continually, she continuously prayed for um, a child. And there was something she did with that child, which I will go into a little bit later in the sermon. Uh, the second couple is, of course, Joseph and Mary, whom you have heard just now. These parents have one thing in common. And the thing they had in common is presenting their children to the Lord in the temple. Why did they do this? Well, that's because as parents, we are given the incredible responsibility and privilege of raising and nurturing the next generation of humanity. The act of presenting our children to God in the temple as Hannah, Mary, Joseph, and Elkanah did, is a powerful reminder of the importance of our role as parents and the impact we can have on our children's life. And so my message today is going to deal with three key aspects of our role as parents and the impact we can have on our children's life. The first is the importance of presenting our children to God. The second is the power of prayer. And the third is setting an example for our children to follow. So let's deal with the first one then. The importance of presenting our children. The act of presenting their children to God was a powerful symbol of their faith and trust in God's plan for their child. This is Joseph and Mary and Hannah and Elkanah. They presented their child in the temple for God to bless the child. When we present our children to God in the temple, we are making a commitment to raise them in the way that honors God. This means we teach our children to God and to have a desire to serve Him. And we do this by teaching them to live according to the principles and purposes of God and to seek God's will in their lives. We also have to instill in them a sense of purpose and meaning for life that is rooted in faith. What about the power of prayer then when it comes to raising children? Both parents in the Old and New Testament were people of deep faith who turned to prayer in times of need. Hannah, for example, prayed earnestly for a child. Hannah would fast and not eat for days. And when her prayers was answered in the birth of Samuel, now, Samuel is one of the most powerful prophets in our Old Testament. In fact, he was the first judge, but also a prophet for Israel. So he had two roles in his capacity as a leader in Israel. Hannah presented Samuel in the temple because she had made a vow and said, look, God, if you bless me with a child, then I'm going to present the child back to you and he will serve you. And that's exactly what Hannah did. Joseph and Mary relied on prayer as they navigate their lives and challenges 
what surrounded Mary's pregnancy, the birth of Jesus, and raising him. Prayer is a powerful tool that parents can use to guide and protect their children. By praying for your child, you are asking God to give them wisdom, strength, and the guidance for their life. <coughs> Parents can also pray to protect their children from harm and to help them make good decisions. Of course, we can't control everything that goes on in our children's life, but we can pray and ask God to look after them. By praying for our children, we are putting our trust in God and acknowledging that He is the ultimate authority of their lives. What about the importance of setting an example then? As parents, your primary role is to be a role model for your children. They look up to you. They learn from what you do and the way you live your life. Therefore, it is crucial that you set a good example for them to follow. This includes how you treat others, how you handle difficult situations, and your overall attitude to life. It is not enough to say to children, kind to other people, or tell them, for example, not to watch television, or not to look on their mobile phone when you are not doing the same thing. You must demonstrate these qualities in your own life and your children will follow suit. When children see you living out these values, they are more likely to adopt them. And of course, there are many examples we can do in terms of how we treat people, how we speak to people, how we live our own life. That will set an example for the children to follow. In conclusion, parenting is a sacred responsibility and one that comes with its own set of challenges and joy. By learning from the example of Elkanah, Hannah, Mary and Joseph, we can be better equipped to raise our own children in a way that honors God and helps them to grow to become the people that God has created them to be. Remember that our role as parents is not only to provide our children with physical needs, but also to guide them spiritually for them to grow in the Lord. Children are a blessing from God. Raise them to love God and to serve Him in their hearts. Be the kind of parent that God wants you to be. And as you do that, may God help you as you trust in Him to protect your children and to raise them to God. Amen.